Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Wen Yuzhen. I'm the TME for VSRX. And we, I'm going to just do a quick demo about the features you folks just asked about, the Layer 7 services for VSRX. So basically, VSRX not only provides the traditional TCP IP type of stateful firewall with VP, IPsec VPN and a NAT and, and, and a routing, um, comes with Junos, all that good stuff, but also we extend the service to advanced security features. The thing I'm going to um, demo here is the app firewall, which basically we're going to launch a few applications. This is a uh, Windows VM that's sitting on a server upstairs in my uh, in my data center room and uh, I'm gonna use this connect to the VSRX on the same server and get a, uh, get a connect to the internet and I'm gonna use the security director to manage the security policy and uh, for the VSRX so we'll be able to see what applications has been traversed the network and we'll be able to act actively blocking some of the applications um, during this demo. So as you can see, we'll do a live refreshing here because I haven't done anything so far. So basically there's some activities going on, like for example, the Firefox uh, browser is doing some updates. But let's go to the Windows VM and we launch a couple of uh, applications. For example, we're gonna do Amazon And uh, second, we're going to launch Facebook. So we, now we're actively running Amazon and Facebook in that Windows VM. So it's generating traffic to Amazon and Facebook. So let's go back to our SD, Security Director environment, to see what's happening here. <coughs> If I do a live update, as you can see, right at the timeline, <clears throat> which is about 11.24, we see we're catching some activities, you know, with our VSRX, we see Amazon traffic has been generated, and we also see some OSS, OCSP, which is basically the online certification, basically when you access Amazon, you will have that. Uh, enabled as well, and we have Firefox update, and let's, let's do another hit, refresh. And you should be able to see Facebook access as well. And we can also see it from the bars. So as we can see, we have Amazon, Facebook, you know, um, Firefox update. This all the applications being showing up in our app track, so we'll be able to track those applica applications um, with the traffic generated from that Windows 7 VM. So now let's go ahead and uh, uh, initiate the uh, app firewall. Basically what we're doing is we're gonna try to block access to uh, Amazon and Facebook. So we can manage that uh, using the security director as well. <coughs> this is our uh, VSRX demo 01 device, which is you know basically the gateway for that Windows 7 VM. So we're going to change the. Let's do a refresh here. Let's go to the firewall policies and so we're gonna unlock our device. Now we're gonna add firewall. As you can see, we can add in some applications to, to the blacklist, which basically what are we gonna block? So we're gonna do some search here, uh, Facebook. And we're gonna block the access to Facebook. And also we're gonna do Amazon. So basically we're now adding Facebook and Amazon to our blacklist. We're gonna update that firewall policy. We will save it first. Then we're gonna lock the policy. 
and then we're going to publish it and update the device based on the new policy. It will take a few seconds. Let's run through this process. <clears throat> so what actually we're doing now is security director as the security policy manager is publishing the policy into the VSRX demo devices, which is um, you know our security gateway that's connecting to the uh, Windows 7 VM. What, um, what you may have touched on this, I don't know how deeply, but um, what kind of uh, application recognition are you kind of doing with this? Like if I wanted to, if I, want, if I had users that were tunneling SSH over port 80, could you detect that and handle it in this way? So that's more like your uh, TCP uh, layer 4 type of application, right, you're talking about. So this is more like, so this is actually, we have the, basic on the layer 7 protocol, we're looking deep in the packet. For example, if it's Facebook traffic, then we'll be able to identify the, the traffic pattern of the Facebook. Then we can be able to go all the way to the layer server and to block that, you know, just <clears throat> specifically for for uh, for Facebook traffic. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, some some bad actor gets in in my data center and is trying to exfiltrate data over an SSH tunnel. Um, sure, that, that's that's more like you know, it's basically a stable firewall. You know, the the, the fundamental firewall f f features we already have. You know, okay, cool. A, but this is not what what I'm demoing right here. So it looks like the policy has already been there and up and running. So, so I can answer your question real quickly in the meantime. Uh, oh, sure, you have you. the ability to add signatures, uh, so you can write your own signatures. We have about three thousand signatures which track app as well. To your typical example, if it's encrypted in SSH, it's obviously yeah. harder. Sure. Um, so we have to rely on just the traffic pattern, and, and if it's a persistent SSH connection, it's going to be that much harder. We're working on a way to decrypt the SSH, and then inspect, and then then sort of put it back in the SSH. Um, obviously, it has performance impacts. Yeah. Because you're decrypting and encrypting the tunnel again, mm -hmm. but it's theoretically doable. We don't have that solution right now. If it's encrypted in SSH, but if it's not, you can uh, identify roughly 3,000 applications already, and you can write your own signatures. Pretty easy to do and add it to the SRX device. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Okay. So let's now start Firefox again, and we try to access to Amazon's website as well as Facebook's website and it looks like you know it's tried to connecting but we didn't get any response so let's go back to SD so from what we're seeing Amazon is still trying to generate traffic, but let's see what's, but it's been actively been blocked. So here on this panel, you see the, the applications that has been blocked, which is Amazon, both Amazon and Facebook access. So now you, the, the, the Windows 7 no longer has the ability to access um, both Amazon and Facebook. Is there options for a notification page or does it just drop the traffic and the user just sits in the We end. do have logs and uh, um, you can customize your, your, your report and um, so it's a whole, we have a log collector basically working along with the security director collecting all the logs and you can customize how you're going to view that and, and put out uh, analytics behind it and uh, with a comprehensive report. I mean for the end user's point of view though, do they get like a splash page you've been blocked or is it just sit and spin like that for them? I uh, didn't quite well, get is there an option for a notification for the user for why their okay. traffic is not You mean going? like system generated uh, alerts? No. Like a splash like, page. Like a splash, a splash page for the user yeah. that says this yeah. page is blocked by your um, security department. No, we, we do not give that, that, that word. You know, basically um, that will be probably something. Because yeah, that would be useful versus that spinning. Well, yeah, then you get the phone call that's just, <laughs> it's just spinning. That works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, no, it's not just for the web traffic. You can do app security for a non-web traffic also. So it'll be kind of awkward to send a response back if it's not a web traffic. Gotcha. So that's. And I'm going to ask one more obvious thing, probably. But um, as far as like user access, I I can tie into some kind of user account 
Yeah, so we have that functionality in our physical SRX boxes, yeah. and we are bringing it into virtual SRX pretty soon. So where you can say, my marketing department gets access to Facebook, um, but my um, Based on sales guys may not get access. It's basically use a firewall feature we're going to put into okay. uh, virtual SRX. It's already in the physical SRX, so physical. Catch that, uh, we're going to put into virtual SRX as well. Okay. okay. Cool. Now within SD, if you have hundreds of SRXs, um, and you want to make sure they're compliant, is there a way to ensure that this policy is actually enforced and configured on all those devices? Yes, you can push uh, the same policy to across different VSRXs. And in this case, I have, like you can see, I have managed um, two VSRX instances here. You can push the same policy, you can use a template. So that's, the, the, that's really the point behind uh, Security Director to well, be I able mean, to manage. I mean, is there a way to actually like audit. Check, yeah, audit for compliance to ensure, you know, say you push a policy and maybe some of your SRXs for some reason it didn't apply, but you want to be able to, you know, ensure that everything has that same policy. You know what I mean? Kind of like so a flag we, or something that yeah, might show so up. We don't, we don't have a compliance kind of module, but I'm sure we can do this by some kind of automation right. um, built around uh, VSRX. Because it'd be interesting, know. like a like a little exclamation, hey, you know. Um, I'm no. not synced up with all of my. No, I'm sure we, if, if you push policies to 100 devices, if if it doesn't get pushed to let's say 10 of them, you we log that behavior. But in any case, I mean, we can do some automation around. Maybe down the line, you want to go and figure out whether all of those are synchronized. You, we can probably do some automation to, to more of a compliance uh, check automation. Cool. So if I have a workload sitting behind VSRX A on host A, and the workload moves to host B, what happens to those the policies that I wanted to protect on that workload? Yeah, so yeah, the policies move with the workload. So policies are, are part of the... Uh, yeah. So if, if the workload is doing something, does it go from host B back to host A to touch that firewall to say, is this workload allowed to do these things, or how is that enforced? So all of the, all of the security <coughs> posture, is irrespective of the VM, V motion, would stay the same because the policies are tied to, uh, uh, yeah. So it also depends on your deployment scenario. If you're making VSRX as the default gateway for your VM, then it doesn't matter. It's just like a physical firewall, right? All the traffic is going to go to the same instance of VSRX and the same set of policies will be applied. But if you have a more of a distributed environment, which is what we are planning to do with NSX, in that case, you will have one VSRX on every host. And as the vMotion happens, the NSX manager is going to make sure that they, uh, they ping our security director saying, hey, I see a VM on host A moving to VM on host as a VM on host B. And then the security director is going to recognize that and say, okay, let me first check if these policies for VM or that tenant exist in host B or not. If it doesn't, then the security director will automatically push those policies and make sure that before VM moves, the policies are already there in the, in the VSRX there. And the third way to do that is a transparent mode firewall. So where you plop in VSRX as a transparent mode firewall anywhere in your network, mm -hmm. and it's a bump in the wire at that point, any traffic that is going through that wire is going to get the policy enforced. So in that case, it's up to, up to you how you deploy VSRX. You have three choices, like I mentioned, and then all three cases will cover the, the policy enforcement. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Just one last thing. I think when you will pass around the USB sticks with the image, so please yep. take advantage of that, and we also provide it online. So, so we have the image of the latest VSX 2.0 <laughs> uh, release for both VMOL and KVM, and all the documentation on uh, installation and uh, uh, system administration with some easy uh, setup uh, to use the JWeb as well. So. Uh, I'm going to distribute that um, afterwards.